Abby. That's me. Pick me. Pick me. I am so excited to be here, and I'm so thankful for compliments for inviting me. Okay, who uh, flew on a plane to get here? Who rode in a car for a really long time? Who has drunk like a lot of soda today? Here is a song for y'all. I wrote this on the way to, uh, I think this was a particularly long flight to Wisconsin, I think, but. generally of my music is dignity, narrowly averted. <laughs> In which spirit? Here's a song about giant squid. Oh, who wrote this song? Oh, it's me. Well, birds have flocks and ponies have socks. The surface of the moon has craters and pocks. Cars have shocks and mobsters have glocks. Mutual funds have large cap socks, but the giant squid Squid has nothing his own but the icy depths that he prowls alone. And if he loses a sad squid moan, it's lost in the murk of the deep where only the giant squid sleep. Well, jewelers have clocks and doors have locks. High school football teams have jocks. Boats have docks and toddlers have blocks. Volcanologists of igneous rocks, but the giant squid, whoa, that giant squid, the giant squid has not. A squid's possessions do not exist, his inventory is an empty list, his economic model isn't capitalist, that invisible hand can't reach. I'll be below the nearest beach. A hound has a fox, and farmers have cocks. Pedestrian crossings have a signal for walk. Climbers have chalk, butter has a crock. Schrodinger's cat has a hazardous box, but the giant squid, whoa, that giant squid. There's one detail I've swept under the rug Where tentacles wiggling like excitable slugs Are the features of a creature who was built to hug So if you dive into the blue A giant squid might have you Well, bagels have locks and said has ock Fastidious painters are sure to have smocks Ladies have frocks and gardens have flocks A CDC research lab has samples of pox But the giant squid, whoa, that giant squid The giant squid has not Thank you, thank you, a lot of squids in the audience I see so my day job is pharmacist. Amazingly, banjo player in Canada doesn't pay the bills. Um, 
So some of my songs are um, work related to my work. Um, this is a song about one of my drug heroes, a Canadian woman um, who, who most of her career was in the States, uh, Frances Kelsey. She was recently appointed at age 100 to the Order of Canada, but was um, recognized with a medal in the US much earlier. She was the woman who uh, stopped thalidomide from being approved um, in the US, averting a lot of tragedy. Someone is beeping, stop beeping. No, cut the red wire, anyone? Okay, I'm taking notes. I'm sending a note to your mother. <laughs> you, you can go do that. <laughs> you, okay, no one needs to ask my permission to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that about your mother. <laughs> so here's my cheerful song about thalidomide. Thalidomide was sold in 50 countries round the world And you know how that story played The wonder drug, the birth betrayed The price that all those families paid But it didn't happen everywhere that way Let's look inside the 1960 FDA The drug went to their new MD. They said, it's safe. She said, I see. I'm afraid I can't agree. I have a few more questions for you first. Francis Kelsey, quiet bulldog of the FDA. Dr. Kelsey made them throw their rubber stamp away. Dr. Kelsey changed the law. And the nation's women saw Being stubborn is a virtue, not a flaw She said, I'd like a study, not a story, please They applied and reapplied They bullied, or at least they tried As she calmly marked denied She said, it's only natural they're anxious well two years pass and they stop trying to get past her as the grim reports were filed of what the drug does to the child and the company reviled said we didn't know she said exactly francis kelsey quiet stamp away Dr. Kelsey changed the law and a nation's women saw being stubborn is a virtue not a flaw Thalidomide touched 12,000 children but just a handful in the USA were standing in the company's way one scientist they could not sway one woman holding fast to what is true The law was changed that here to say enough's enough A drug must be proof safe and more A drug must work for what it's for You can't just push it through the door So raise a toast to courage and to doubt Francis Kelsey, quiet bulldog of the FDA. Dr. Kelsey made them throw their rubber stamp away. Dr. Kelsey changed the law, and a nation's women saw being stubborn is a virtue, not a flaw. Being stubborn is a virtue, not a flaw. She is a hero to me, a woman of great integrity. And still pretty sharp at 100. <laughs> she had some pithy quotes in the CBC article about her Order of Canada induction. This next one is another, this, this one requires some explanation. This is another uh, song from the pharmacy aisles. 
So um, allergy season as a pharmacist always makes me very sad. There are uh, two big kinds of antihistamines. They both block histamine, but the older ones, the ones that they also use like as sleeping pills and stuff, do that because they cross the blood-brain barrier and they get to all those juicy histamine receptors in your brain and those are the ones that make you sleepy. The new ones, the second generation ones, and these are the ones we all buy because they're the non-drowsy ones, they only work on the histamine receptors. The rest of the body, they have like huge chemical sidecars added on so they're just <coughs> won't fit through the blood-brain barrier. They don't get up there, they don't make you sleepy. I always thought that was kind of mean. Let me through, let me through, oh, you cruel blood-brain barrier. My true love waits for me on your farther side. I long to be near her, to hold and to marry her, but cannot pass through, being bulky and wide. Though I cannot pass o'er to the land of my bride. I was counted a marvel the day I was made. A histamine blocker that could not sedate But the armor that grants me such focus has laid On my shoulders a sorrow I can't tolerate Like my forebears I fit As a key fits a lock Any H1 receptor that part is unchanged But the bulk shackled to me has forever blocked Me from reaching my lady who dwells in the brain Let me through, let me through Oh, you cruel blood-brain barrier My true love waits for me On your farther side I long to be near her To hold and to marry her Cannot pass through Being bulky and wide No, I cannot pass o'er To the land of my bride The peripheral H1 receptors are many You may think I should court one of them for a wife But you'll never find one who's the match of my lady Though you search through the bloodstream for all your half-life Her innocent beauty must count as deceptive For her sedative power all men recognize I know could I reach her she would be receptive there's no other lass I will antagonize. Let me through, let me through, oh, you cruel blood-brain barrier. My true love waits for me on your farther side. I long to be near her, to hold and to marry her, but cannot pass through, being bulky and wide. No, I cannot pass or to the land of my bride. from her I can only know torment and be mournful and wretched while my love is denied if you cannot open for even a moment your capillary curtain I surely must die I will seek without flinching the great portal vein and come all untimely to where we're all fated that was a super hilarious pharmacology book by the way let the enzymes hepatic make end to my pain No more to roam plasma bound Unconjugated Let me through, let me through Oh, you cruel blood brain barrier My true love waits for me On your farther side I long to be near her To hold and to marry her But cannot pass through Being bulky and white no, I cannot pass o'er to the land of my bride. No, I cannot pass o'er to the land of my bride. <laughs> I played that for one of my pharmacy professors. And he said, oh, well, I don't think that's anything in a low-dose antipsychotic will take care of, Brooke. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was a compliment or not, but I'm just, I'm just going to go with it as a compliment. Is anyone into Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah! yeah? Yay! Oh, usually when I play the song, everyone's like, yeah, no, what? <laughs> 
this is a song for elephants. This is an, an, an anime, uh, it, it's a manga, and it's also, I, I've only seen um, one of the uh, several anime adaptations of it, of two angsty, angsty magic boys. And uh, this is a song for Alphonse, the slightly less angstier of the pair. <laughs> We have been punished and alchemically rearranged I don't think that I still believe in equivalent exchange I lost my whole body, you lost your leg and your arm I can't help but think that it was you who took greater harm Our mother is gone, but brother I'm still here me inside this armor, her brother, I'm still here. Our mother is gone, and brother, I'm still here. Maybe we should count our blessings, brother, I'm still here. Brother, I'm still here. It's hard to remember now what it felt like to taste food. Can't feel the touch of your skin, but brother, I still feel your mood. I wish I could take your load with the strength of my steel hand. The burden that you carry is too heavy for one man. And our mother is gone, but brother, I'm still here. I'm still me inside this armor, brother, I'm still here. Mother is gone, but brother, I'm still here. Maybe we should count our blessings, brother, I'm still here. Brother, I'm still here. Maybe the philosophers could heal us with their stone. But if you could forgive yourself, we could leave this quest alone. I'll do whatever you decide, and where you go, I'll follow. But brother, can you answer this? Shouldn't it be me who's hollow? Aren't I the one who's hollow? Our mother is gone, but brother, I'm still here. I'm still me inside this armor, brother, I'm still here. Our mother is gone. Brother, I'm still here. Maybe we should count our blessings. Brother, I'm still here. Brother, I'm still here. Angsty, angsty little boys. Ooh. But speaking of angsty, let's crank it up a notch. I need to retune for this, which retuning a banjo should inspire angst in all of you. Um, and I'll need. The lovely Mary Curl who has made record time back in the hotel room with her thingy doodle. Well, I'll tune real slow, which is not, frankly, a challenge. Um, oh, who's a cranky tuner? Uh, uh, oh, mm, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, who paid for your plane ticket? Come on. Okay, I shouldn't say that. Confluence paid for your plane ticket. <laughs> Tune, tune. I have this fancy tuner on my iPad, but it's just. It's a little too fancy. It gives me too much information. I'm like, oh, I can make this so super exact, only no, no, I can't. I'm playing a banjo. Yay! No, I'm really tuning, but I'm almost done, so hurry your ass up on stage. If at any time you are intimidated by my professionalism, I've never actually had to finish that sentence, but. Whoa! <laughs> well, then I better actually tune. Okay. Mary has recently started a video consortium, Crowbot Productions, who has mainly been producing trailers, but uh, I like. Not very good at you, you don't even need the movies, just the trailers, in my opinion. It's. 
<laughs> no. I'm sorry, but I love you all, so I'll tune a little bit more. Oh, I see. It's all the other strings are jealous. <laughs> so this is a song about um, a book by a past go. Um, Shauna McGuire only uh, writing as Mira Grant, uh, the, 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 the feed books, the Mason uh, books. This is a duet between um, a man and the voice in his head. Okay, just, just pick a letter, pick a letter. My banjo's gotten sweaty and nervous. No! Oh. <laughs> this is my most boring song. <laughs> and afterwards I'm gonna tune it back, but... Okay, let's <laughs> get compiled, ship it. <laughs> All right, this is called My Time Again. It's, um, if you've read the books, it's a duet between Sean and the Georgia in his head. If you haven't read the books, this is, I think, cryptic enough not to spoil it for you, but uh, you should read the books. They're really great. They are. Also, <laughs> they have me in it. They have um, Dr. Abby, the mysterious Dr. Abby. The, the reference to me was a lot more mysterious before I got divorced and changed my name back to Abby. <laughs> now it's, it's more of an open secret. But I'm just like, I'm a mad scientist. Shannon said, I can't kill you because I'm afraid of what your mom will do to me. <laughs> my mom, Deb Abby, really loves Dr. Shannon Abby in the book. She's super, super excited. Anyway, I guess I should play the song. That's traditional, isn't it? Thank 
you. And now the song you love so much, Brooke retuning her banjo. Oh, see, this worked a lot better, probably because you've already got your video camera set up. plan that. You left in the songs that you don't like. No. <laughs> she just opened the door. Speaking of lights turning red, key red, key red, no key red. <laughs> no, come back. And then I had to prove I was you. Because <laughs> my name's not on the room. Oh, you had to go get a new key? Uh-huh. And you still came back in like five minutes? Uh-huh. I ran. <laughs> you are a testament to Zombies Run. <laughs> I hope so. I, I think as, as long as I prove that I'm Mary, <laughs> I should be fine. Am I a piano one? Oh, sorry. Clarinet on this? You're not a piano, honey. Oh, that's right. I think I'm clarinet. You are a clarinet. No, you're not a clarinet. Oh, I forgot my clarinet treats. I'm sorry. This is Benny, Mary's clarinet, who has condescended to join me on stage. I wrote this song after um, uh, some friends of mine went on a road trip to OVFF from Seattle, which is a good long road trip, and uh, they knew I love roadside attractions, so they would send me tweets and photos of all the dinky little roadside things and all the dams that they visited on the way. I love dam tours. They're so boring, and I love them so much. There's always, like, a retired engineer who's, like, trying to stump the 20-something college student who, like, does not give a shit about turbines, but it's like... Well, sir, I think it's a Francis turbine. I know it is, because I built it 50 years ago. It's, it's great. I love them. Anyway, <laughs> this song is not about dance, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's called Roadside Attraction. Oh, hey, how does this song go? Oh. <laughs> B minor. <laughs> okay, good. I was like, oh, no, it's breaking it. No, I just decided to switch to B flat to fuck with you. It's <laughs> oh, I would love it. Well, that would be fucking with me. And okay, well, B it is. No, okay, oh, now I'm gonna start playing it in B flat. No, no, no. I built you a shrine in black velvet in a chapel with marabou trim, where portraits of mystical figures, grand miracles, dance and sing hymns. Over here, Joan of Arc will glow in the dark With her holiness or with her paint Is it God's earnest blessing or divorce for us? You never can tell with a saint The relic's true worth is debated But I take every one at its face Authentic is so overrated For the forger made to express grace For does it really matter If Christ's sacred platter Has a label marked made in Japan Maybe not just salvation But free validation A parking is part of God's plan Please come and visit my altar And I'll honor the coupon I gave For a 15% price reduction On a pebble from Elvis's grave Now foreign investors in cheap polyester Suits have arrived to size up The earnings Potential of sites reverential with snack bars and souvenir cups. So stop by my roadside attraction before all the truth disappears. For I built it for you from black velvet, and it's fake, but it's also sincere.
sincerity is what I love the most about roadside attractions is just they, they always take themselves super seriously and just give her and I'm just like you go you be a corn palace you just be the best corn palace you can <laughs> okay it's time for a song about dry cleaning this is um, a Dead Man's Pants. It's by um, Al Mater, who is a Vancouver um, artist who calls himself the Minimalist Jug Band because it's just him and he, he doesn't have a band. Or a jug. He's got, <laughs> he's got like a bucket. It's, uh, he is something. He's, uh, uh, he can't carry a tune. That's not what the bucket's for. We're not sure what the bucket is for. But he writes interesting lyrics. So the, the music is by my very favorite ex-boyfriend, the, the extremely hairy accordion festival hospital sterile supply manager, Rowan Lipkowitz. <laughs> and that is a sentence I've never said before and may never say again successfully. I don't have an accordion, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. I do, ha I do have a clarinet. Oh, <laughs> I have some, something out of tune. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, it's you. It's you. I knew it. I didn't know it. <laughs> Thank God, it's so often that my hearing is not really good enough to notice the minor variations. But there we go, okay. Anyone with perfect pitch in the audience, I'm so sorry that you chose to come to a banjo concert. Well, I went down to the Sally Ann and bought myself a pair of pants. I took them home, they fit just fine. They used to be a dead man's, now they're mine. I'm walking around. I didn't stain him, glad he didn't tear him, else I wouldn't buy him, no, I wouldn't wear him. No cuffs, no pleats, just like I wanted. Best of all, they're not haunted. I'm saying a prayer for these dead man's pants. Well, he must have had style, he must have had taste, must have had a 34 leg and a 32 waist. Reuse, recycle, and all of that. But do they make my ass look fat? Yeah, it does my ass look fat in these dead man's pants? And when I'm toast, lying on a slab, these pants will be up for grabs. I may be covered in dirt, six feet deep, but these pants will be clean and will be dirt cheap. Dead man's pants, you could be wearing them when I'm dead. about those dead man's pants. Ow! What Ooh. Ooh, hey, that's a thing. Oh, I rocked a part off my banjo. I'm super excited. Okay, I hope reattaching the knob won't do anything exciting. I'm amazed that I did that first and not my toddler. <laughs> I have a four-year-old who's very interested in playing my banjos. Well, playing at my banjos. He's just... He likes tuning them, but he's, he's worse at it than I am, and as you can see, it's, it's, it's a, a very dissonant household when he gets in a banjo mood. Lately, he discovered my slide whistle, which I feel sad about owning now. <laughs> because slide whistles are really loud. I discovered it at 7 in the morning one morning. <laughs> I woke up, I rolled over, I removed the Lego from, that was stuck to my thighs, and I said, oh, honey, I, that'll be very loud for the neighbors. Oh, oh, it's okay, Mama. They weren't listening. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Here's the song that's not about Lego. This is about another Shauna McGuire book. Um, the first one in her wonderful, wonderful um, October Day series. This is called Rosemary and Rue. <coughs> and if you read Rosemary and Rue, and then you read through like to the other like ten books, and then you get to like the most recent one, then you're like, holy shit, she knew what was going to go on in book ten all along. So. Yes, then you do. And you're like, the things I thought were inconsistent at first were just like, you were setting me up. <laughs> you're an evil mastermind. Evil mastermind urban fantasy. It's, it's good. Anyway. Are you uh... He's sinking, apparently. Oh, are you? Yeah. Well, that's great. <laughs> I, I'm glad you had trouble remembering, too, because I, I actually had to think about it. It's like, what did I do on this? Okay. <laughs> Oh. Sometimes I like to be very efficient and combine rehearsal and performance into one easy step. It's <laughs> the moment I met you 
too high, took a dislike. You were surly and rude, we were too much alike. Now my heart's only wish is to keep faith with you. But all I can offer is Rosemary and Drew. Rosemary and Drew, Rosemary and Drew. My cut grass and copper, just this can I offer. The only bouquet of Rosemary and Drew. Like a fool, I believed when your green apple eyes proclaimed me a hero in apple green lies. I gave you my oath that I would help you flee. I promised to save you, instead you saved me. Rosemary and Drew, Rosemary and Drew, my cut grass and copper, just this can I offer, a lonely bouquet of Rosemary and Drew. of the evening roses may fade but your dying glance at me a new curse has laid it was not I who killed you but I who betrayed and I'll count now forever the cost that you paid Rosemary and Rue Rosemary and Rue by cut grass and copper, just this can I offer a lonely bouquet of rosemary and rue. By oak, ash, and thorn, that is all I can do. Thank you. I think you're clarinet in this one. Are you clarinet in this one? I am. What key am I in? Uh, a minor. Oh. Surprise! Yay! Like every other song I wrote in 2006, A minor. <laughs> I learned some more chords after that, but I don't think I've got the chords to this one either. But it's okay. It's um. Well, there's some A minor. Here you can look. Huh? Oh, oh, mm, oh, very nice. Eh? And then the surprise ending where it's also A minor. Oh my God, I never saw. Oh, I'm that. sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's been a long time since I had coffee this morning, <laughs> which is probably it just was as well. Really a long time ago. Okay, because I'm, I'm still a hummingbird. Um, my album is from 2009, but I've been, I'm playing a couple songs from it on here. 
I don't have a new one because, as I mentioned, I have a toddler. <laughs> But um, if you would like to hear more of my music, all of it is up at Bandcamp at brookabbey.com, um, including the album if you want to download it. But if you have five dollars, please don't make me take these home. And I'm going to be sitting down after this one, so you can totally give me five dollars. What? No, no, no. There's another one after this one. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, you could sit down if you don't like it. Eh? Eh? Oh, yeah. You okay. will need to sit down after that one. That one's okay. kind of sweaty. But this one isn't. I, I, I hope. I don't know. This... <laughs> Where was I? I was, okay, I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm on stage, what's my motivation? Um, you're on stage in Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm the guest of honor, shit, okay. Okay, okay, I've got this, I've got this, here we go. This is um, a, a song about uh, an Octavia Butler book. Octavia Butler is probably my favorite author. Um, and this is, um, this is the first book of hers I ever read, which was the third book in a trilogy. <laughs> So I have weird feelings about this trilogy because like I really feel for the people at the end and like it turns out from the start of the trilogy that they're kind of manipulative evil aliens a little bit like there's some moral ambiguity but I'm just like but I love them. <laughs> it worked. It, it worked. I, I eventually have read it in the correct order many times and I love it. This is from Imago the third in her Xenogenesis uh, trilogy which I love 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 but all of her books are spooky and delicious and great and this is Imago. <laughs> Juan Nikant, you have always been careful to have sons and daughters, not children like you. I know it has pained you to channel hard choices. I know because I have stood closest to you. Dangerous, I am part human, but danger must come for our race to renew. I could pretend to be sister or brother, but who won the conch? We both know it's not true. Struck to loy, not yet and not now, and defer and review. I know that my wildness and power are frightening, but I am here now. I can't wait for their cue. Convenient, but Wuhan, you know it's too late. I have moved. Wuhan, I am your Uika. Wuhan, I am in that book, the Onkali are a, a race with three or five sexes, depending on how you count it, and uh, they um, discover that humans have cancer, which to them is a powerful thing, which means that they can get tremendous healing powers if they incorporate it. Um, um, one of the sexes are genetic manipulators, and they're afraid to have any that are part human, because they're just like freaked out that like this will go monstrously wrong, gray goo kind of thing, but uh, then one of the kids is like, well, actually... <laughs> Here I am. This, it's a big, complicated, chewy book, and I love it. 
So uh, this next song um, reminds me very little of that. <laughs> this is by a, a Canadian band. It's sort of more of a one-man folk uh, label now, but it used to be a big, um, uh, not safe for work, uh, big band uh, jazz group, uh, Big Rude Jake um, from Toronto. Um, this is called When My Number Comes In. Ticket. I stand in line at the lottery wicket Thinking about the day that I win And how I'll spend my cash when my number comes in I love people to see and things to do I've got an appointment with my haberdasher at two I'd like to stay and chat but I got no time to spare I got a cozy little date at the club play share We got a box seat at the very best venue Get the waiter to read me the French menu. We'll start her out with peaches and cream. Tonight I got a taste for Alsatian cuisine. And no one cares if you're fat when you've got bread. Cause if your looks won't kill, your cash will knock them dead. I'll have a sweet, steady girl and two on the side. Every girl go wanna be my bride. I'll be a gal about ten. Real VIP, I'll be the brand new toast to high society. I'll take my buddies out drinking and howling at the moon. Oh, a morning won't start until well into the afternoon. I'll take breakfast in bed in my silk pajamas, tangerines, and red bananas. When I sweeten my coffee, I'll be feeling no pain. I'll have a sugar bowl full of pure cocaine. They'll be calling me the Sultan. sit down. Okay. Be gone. Well, it sounds so mean. Oh, 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 I know this song. Oh, you should sell her on eBay. You'll get a fortune. <laughs> oh my god, I need glasses. Oh, I have glasses. That's great. Okay, that's good. I just discovered this year that I need glasses, and I'm so happy because I always wanted glasses when I was little. Because in books, like, the smart kid always had glasses. And I was like, you know, like, I read a lot. I was a library monitor. Like, I got up early to go to school to help the librarian shelve books. And I was like, 
Surely I must need glasses, but I had great vision. But finally, I have wrecked my eyes enough that I need glasses to see, and I'm so happy. I'm like, I fog up my glasses, and I'm like, oh my god, this is great. I have zits on the bridge of my nose. I'm like, this is amazing. I've always wanted this. My inner eight-year-old is just super chuffed. It's, I'm sure eventually I'll start whining about it, but the time has not yet arrived. So I'm like, oh, I have a superpower. <laughs> I sent a text to one of my friends with a picture of me in my glasses for the first time, and they're like, well, that's cute, but who is this? This is my secret number for Wonderbrook. You look, you look like some kind of reporter. I <laughs> it was good. It was good. Here is a, another romantic love song, only, well, not so much, because I'm me. You're a Phillips head bit, and I'm a posy drive screw. We've got so much in common, but you're stripping me away. You're an Ethernet cable, hoping I'll connect with you. I just want a crimping tool to make you terminate. Honey, this will never work. You're the wrong next block in Tetris. You're a brand new at your sketch, but I don't want to draw a square. You're coax, I'm twisted pair. I'm a that's a mail compiler and you keep writing go-tos Whenever you're a perfect ten, I'm playing Sudoku I may need stronger glasses You are Captain Kirk's phaser, I'm King Arthur's sword You're a sixty-letter word and I'm a Scrabble board You want to triple word score but you'll never fit my grid You're a price tag on a sticker, I'm an eBay auction bid I'm afraid you're not my type you're the wrong next block in Tetris You're a brand new at your sketch But I don't want to draw a square You're coax, I'm twisted pair I'm an SML compiler And you keep writing go-tos Whenever you're a perfect ten I'm playing Sudoku We run on different voltages And there's no adapter I'm a herbivorous mammal You're a velociraptor You stay up all night And I am strictly diurnal the chips it on your main board's not supported by my kernel Honey, this will never work You're the wrong next block in Tetris You're a brand new at your sketch But I don't want to draw a square You're coax, I'm twisted pair I'm an SML compiler And you keep writing go-tos Whenever you're a perfect ten I'm playing Sudoku I'm afraid you're not my type Runtime error, type mismatch. I'm just getting blinder and blinder as the night goes on. Who are all these people on my lawn? This next one is a song. <laughs> Someone's still awake. Okay. <laughs> this is called Unhappy Campers. You tell me it's the age of miracles, of wonders, marvels, feats. You say, consider life for cavemen. Now does not your life seem sweet? I take my cherry penicillin in my space-age plastic spoon. You're counting blessings for me while I'm counting footprints on the moon. And the count leaves me unsatisfied. I want there to be more. My boots are on the laces tied. I am heading out the door You wave me out with some disgust You tell me leave me if you must It's plain to me to see You never will be happy And I say unhappy campers Lift us up and make us grow Unsatisfied yearning shows us where we need to go But the shining beauty of today reflects A light onto the place to travel next 
I watch you chewing on my words like they're a bubble gum jahabar. I do not mean to cause you hurt, and I agree that we've come far. But don't you tell me that the angels' crystal songs have all been sung, for I have found another ladder, and we're on the lowest rung, and the ladder's top is dangling. Lost a view in outer space The abandoned finish line Of the mighty nation's race But if they've laid down their baton We'll pick it up and carry on For now is not the time To sit and watch the sunset And it's unhappy campers lift us up and make us grow Unsatisfied yearning shows us where we need to go And I am not blind to wonder And I do not shrink from a home But the shining beauty of today reflects A light onto the place to travel home next You may rest upon your laurels I prefer to stay awake You may sail your placid seas But if I'm there the boat will shake I am singing up an earthquake While you sing your lullaby For it's through trouble and upheaval That we reach toward the sky But do not let my disparagements Your cheerful heart destroy for though I reject contentment, I have traded it for joy. Storm and struggle both accord, a paradoxical reward. The sweetest dreams in life are not achieved in slumber. For it's unhappy campers lift us up and make us grow. Unsatisfied yearning shows us where Light on to the place to travel home next. I've been sort of like avoiding eye contact with Judy, which is vital as a performer or you will lose it. But I just want to say thank you for standing up here and getting twice as sweaty as me. And it is an honor to have you join me on stage. Okay, look to your left, look to your right, find someone you're a little bit irritated with. We're at a convention, it shouldn't be hard. <laughs> You'll know what to do. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. The rest is purely hostile intent Rock, paper, scissors never solved anything Let's have a thumb war It's a thumb war now, don't you scoff It's a thumb war, the gloves are coming off It's a thumb war, now I'm thumbing my nose It's a thumb war, they've always been opposed Bow Shake hands one, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. One, two, three, four, five. You said you like Shakespeare, and that's a mistake. A man with thumbs should never make. Romeo and Juliet are writing act one. All those Capulets biting their thumbs. It was a thumb war. Now don't you scoff. It's a thumb war. The gloves are coming off. It's a thumb now I'm thumbing my nose, it's a thumb war They've always been opposed Bow, shake hands One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war 
One, two, three, four, five. All right, turn to your neighbor. Nice. <laughs> How am I doing for time? Oh, there's a huge clock. <laughs> Reading is hard. <laughs> I've got two songs left. Maybe I'll do three songs, though. Then I can end on a super downer. <laughs> you laugh me, you laugh. Here's my mushy mushy song I wrote about my son. Um, I don't know if this is a science fiction thing or if everyone does this, but. I don't know, thinking about time travel and like, you know, what if I could just go back and like, I was the only one who knew what happened in the future. And it's like, you know, you like, you make like a token thing like, oh yeah, I'd, you know, prevent wars and shit. But like, also, I would have said that super clever thing to that guy and I would have been like, look super smart in my math class. Anyway, this is sort of a song about that and sort of a mushy song about my baby. There's a mental game, what if I were sent back 20 years knowing how things went? One imagines that with a few more tries I might get it right, being oh so wise. But wistful thoughts of pulling out a whole thorn disappeared the day that you were born. For there's no regret on which I could stew That's painfully enough to risk missing you Every bad choice that kept me up at night Every poor decision, sorrow or a slight Is a treasure now that you're here with me Because if they changed, you might not be What I want I just want the chance To watch you take Your trembling steps And make your mistakes To hold you tight To let you go Be worried and proud To always know That I may not be A beacon of light But there's one thing That I did right I did right Every bad choice that kept me up at night Every bad decision, sorrow or slight Is a treasure now that you're here with me Because if they changed You might not be Here with me Here's a song about death, which is not my super downer ending. <laughs> War and starvation fill many a hearse. Heart disease takes two lives for every three. If you die in a car crash, you won't be the first. But I'm hoping there's something less common for me. I want to die like they do in sci-fi, really glamorous death, the really famous last breath. I want to die like they do in sci-fi, I want to do something new. If it's the last thing I do, I could be strangled by quantum entanglement, or maybe it turns out that comets cause 
cause cancer. I'll be unspeakably mangled by Lovecraftian angles or burn in the atmosphere like a star dancer. Yeah, I want to die like they do inside a fire, really glamorous death, the really famous last breath. I want to die like they do inside a fire, I want to do something new. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get lunar silicosis, 307, nail cirrhosis, or crustacean deprivation on the world without shrimp. Maybe an alien probe will laser my frontal lobe and make me travel back in time to the Hindenburg blimp. I want to die like they do inside a fire, really glamorous death, the really famous last breath. I want to die like they do inside a fire, I want to do something new. If it's the last thing I do, I'll be murdered inside a proton super collider by an evil AI who didn't like my query. I don't have to decide the best way to have died. I'll do it infinite times thanks to many worlds theory. Yeah, I want to die like they do inside a fire, really glamorous death, the really famous last breath. I want to die like they do inside a fire, want to do something new. If it's the Did Judy die real good? I hope so. She, she said ki kindly. I <laughs> that was going to be my last song, but the coffee is still working my mojo, so I will um, pretend I heard... Oh, my goodness, a call for an encore. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I am so honored. Oh, oh, oh just one more. <laughs> Well, that one was kind of peppy, but this is the saddest song that I know. But uh, I hope you like it. Let me tell you the story, as sad as it's true, of the 17 men of the East Hill Mine crew. They were digging for copper for telephone wires when the pitch shaft was blocked by a terrible fire. Escape was cut off by the flames and the ash. Yet they might have been rescued but for that ship crash. Let me tell you the story, as sad as it's true, of the 48 sailors and the 17 men of the East Hill Mine crew. The SS Kentucky was badly off course to have arrived in the tailing pond instead of the port. She ran aground in the smoke at the top of the mine, which also obscured the rail passenger her line. I love it when those people who haven't heard this before. Let me tell you the story, or read about it in the newspaper, of course. Tori, as sad as it's true, of the 94 train passengers, 48 sailors, and the 17 men of the East Hill Mine crew. Oh, your train's engineer may be valiant and skilled If your train hits a steamship, you're bound to be killed Yet this terrible wreck would have caused much less fuss If the train had avoided that yellow school bus Let me tell you the story, as sad as it's true of the Miss Mullins first grade class, the 94 train passengers, 48 sailors, and the 17 men of the East Hill Mine crew. Those poor tots and their teacher were on a school visit to the East Hill Mine Safety Museum exhibit. Their passing was tragic, but mercifully fast. They probably never saw the puppies caught in the blast. Let me tell you the story, as sad as it's true, of the eight orphan puppies 
Miss Mullins, first grade class, and 94 train passengers, 48 sailors, and the 17 men of the East Hill Mine crew. Well, the dogs had been rescued that day from the pound, and those brave orphan pups to a new life were bound to a school to be trained as guide dogs for the blind. But their truck's awful luck took them past East Hill Mine. And they avoided the mine shaft and the ship and the train wrecks. And they swerved around the burning school bus when suddenly a jet containing 50 tiny babies and the only sample of the cure for cancer crashed into them in a fiery explosion whose unlikely seismic repercussion triggered a volcanic eruption. Oh, oh, oh. And that was the story, as sad as it's true. Of the Levacard Major German Centers of the Eastern Seaboard, the 50 tiny babies, the lost year for cancer, the eight orphan puppies, Miss Mullins first grade class, the 94 train passengers, 48 sailors, <gasps> and the 17 men of the East Hill Mine crew. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. And thank you, Judy. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Randy, and to everyone at Confluence. Thank you, sound people. Open Filking will be here pretty soon. I hope you stick around. <laughs>